Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have dy over dx equals 1 over x plus y, and we're going to be solving for y, or maybe for x, or maybe for both, who knows. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and replace x plus y with something. A lot of times when we have expressions like this, if we have x plus y plus something else or kind of like a linear combination of x and y, it will make sense to use substitution. And we can call this, I guess, u substitution because we're going to call this u. Okay? So u is equal to x plus y. Since y is a function of x, u is also going to be a function of x. So in other words, we can talk about du over dx. Make sense? Which means the derivative of u. So when I write u prime, I mean du over dx. And of course, y prime is the same as dy over dx. Make sense? So far, so good? Great. Now let's go ahead and differentiate both sides in this expression. Because a lot of times when you substitute, you have to substitute everything, right? You can't just stick with different variables at the same time. So if you differentiate this, the derivative of u is u prime, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of y is y prime. This is nice. We're going to go ahead and take a look at our expression one more time. We have dy over dx, which is y prime. So this is y prime. So I do need to be able to replace y prime with something because I was able to replace x plus y with u. What am I going to replace uh, y prime with? Well, I didn't even write it down, so let me write it first. Yes, from here, we can isolate y prime and write it as u prime minus 1. Awesome. That is equal to 1 over u. You like that? Nice, right? Cool. From here, our goal is going to be to isolate u prime and then use the Leibniz notation. Is that what it is? du over dx. I think that's from Leibniz. And use that to solve our problem because we want to turn this into a separable equation, right? As it is, it's not separable. X and Y are stuck together. We can't really separate them. In order for us to be able to separate, it needs to be a product. Make sense? Cool. Let's forget about Y prime and write this as U prime is equal to 1 over U plus 1, which can be written as 1 over U over U. Now, we're going to integrate this to find U. But first, we have to, we have to write U prime as du over dx and then from here I hope you get to see it we're going to put the u terms on one side and dx on the other side so in other words we're gonna find the reciprocal multiply both sides by u over 1 plus u and then times du and then it's gonna equal dx make sense okay now our goal is to solve for u first so let's go ahead and integrate both sides now, when we do integrate on the left-hand side, u over 1 plus u. Hmm, that kind of looks simple, right? Why don't we just do this? u plus 1 minus 1 divided by u plus 1. I wanted to separate it and write the bottom like the top. And then from here, we get 1 minus 1 over u plus 1. So this is actually what we need to integrate. This is, by the way, easier than, easier than the original expression, the integrand. If you integrate 1, you're going to get u. And if you integrate 1 over u plus 1, you're going to get ln u plus 1. Let me not use the absolute value. If you use, it's probably going to be more accurate. But this is what it is. Set it equal to what? The integral of dx is x plus what? A constant. What is u? We have to back substitute, right? Let's go back and find out. u is, or u are, <laughs> u is x plus y. So we're going to replace u with x plus y and then minus ln x plus y plus 1 equals x plus z. I mean c as a constant, right? Cool. Now what am I going to do next? Cancel out the x. And you're going to have somewhat a y from here. It's not going to be like y by itself, but kind of mixed together. But one of the things we can probably do is what? 
e to the power of size because we have an ln and that is going to simplify this expression a great deal. But in order to be able to do that, I'm probably going to, let me see, I probably want to stick to e to the power something. Hmm, that's a good question. Anyways, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do e to the power of both sides like this and like that. And when I do that, it's going to be e to the y divided by e to the ln, which is actually x plus y plus 1. And you know what? e to the c is another constant. Let's call that k. At this point, I'm probably going to put the x plus y plus 1 on the other side and write this as e to the y over k. k is a constant. 1 over k can, again, be turned into something nicer. But let's hold on to that for now because we're going to have a lot of constants. So here's what I need to do. I have x plus y plus 1, and then I can go ahead and multiply both sides by e to the power of negative y to negate the exponential on the right-hand side. And that kind of gives me the following. These two become 1, and I get 1 over k, which is kind of like a constant, right? Again, I can call that something else. But let's go ahead and work with this a little bit. Now, this expression is going to give me 1 over k, which is a constant. I guess you can call this c sub 1, whatever. Now, I want to use Lambert's w function. Do you want to do you want to use that too? Notice that with Lambert's w function, we need to have something like t e to the t. So when we apply Lambert, it's going to give us t. Output input thing, right? The inverse function stuff. So how do we get there though? Do we have our t? Yeah, sort of. This looks like our t, but we have a minus sign. So I might as well just multiply both sides by negative 1 first. If I do, I'm going to get the following. e to the power of negative y is going to equal negative 1 over k. Again, I didn't replace it with a constant. I'll probably do it towards the end. Now, this expression is getting better, but not good enough. I do need a minus x minus 1 in the exponent. In other words, the t. This is my t, right? I do need it here too. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply both sides by e to the power negative x minus 1. So we're going to get negative e to the power negative x minus 1 over k. Great. This is kind of getting much and much better. We get negative x minus y minus 1 times e to the power negative x minus y minus 1 by adding the exponents, obviously. And this equals negative e to the power negative x minus 1 all over k. Awesome. This is a good time to apply Lambert's w function, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and w both sides with Lambert. And that's going to give us what we need. Okay. If we apply it on the right hand side, I mean the left hand side, we're going to get this negative x minus y minus 1. And on the right hand side, we're just going to get w something something, right? Okay, great. You can definitely isolate y from here. If you do isolate y, you should be getting negative Lambert negative e to the negative x minus 1 over k minus x minus 1. Of course, our goal is to solve for y almost all the time, and this should give us the solution. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative method, which I, get, I guess I can call second method. We have dy over dx equals 1 over x plus y. Awesome. What can I do with this? I can flip both sides. Why? Because that's going to give us a different perspective, obviously. We can kind of treat this like x as a function of y. And is that what we kind of found at the beginning? Because I guess x could be maybe isolated somewhat along with y, of course. But anyways, so this is an alternative approach. I know some people say dy over dx is not a fraction. You can't just flip it. Well, it's not a fraction, but it's a fraction. So we can flip it, okay? <laughs> just, you know, work with me on that. So how do we solve this equation? That's going to be the million dollar question. In other words, we have something like this. x prime equals x plus y. And if you want to write it like x prime minus x equals y, you're going to see that this is kind of like y and x interchanged and we have a non-homogeneous equation. But you can start by solving it for the homogeneous case. And then basically the roles of x and y are just flipped. 
right? Obviously, you could also call this U and proceed with that. That would also be a feasible solution. But if you think about this, this is basically the differential operator applied on X minus 1, and that gives us Y. Make sense? And if you kind of write the characteristic equation, it's going to be R minus 1 equals 0. In other words, I'm kind of replacing X with E to the power KY. And then from here, K or R value should be 1. In other words, uh, X equals E to the Y should satisfy this equation, right? But the thing is, it's not homogeneous. It is non-homogeneous. So what I should do is find a particular solution. And then this is the homogeneous solution. Find the particular solution and add them up to get the general solution. Make sense? And how do I find the a particular solution because my expression contains y on the right hand side I'll probably just assume something like a y plus b and then I'm going to differentiate it and then plug it into the original equation if I differentiate x I get a and if I subtract x from it x prime minus x is going to be a minus a y minus b and then if you go ahead and set it equal to y from here, you're going to find the a and b values. For example, a is going to be negative 1. a minus b is going to be 0, which means a and b are equal. b is also going to be negative 1. You're going to get something like x equals negative y minus 1. But this is just a particular solution. So if you add the homogeneous solution to it, you're going to get the complete general solution. And when you put those together, you're going to get something like this. I guess we should write the homogeneous first, maybe. I don't know. e to the y minus y minus 1. And of course, you can kind of think about how we could convert this to the Lambertable form. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, <laughs> let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, and this brings us to the end of this video. Until next time, bye-bye.